Good morning. Thank you, Philip. That was, I could just sit and listen all day. Okay, welcome to Cuba First Baptist, and we welcome all those who are online at Facebook. A reminder that um, we're going to be doing communion later if you want to gather your elements for those of you who are at home. You guys are set. We're all, we're all set here. Uh, let's look at the life of the church and look at your bulletin for announcements. Carol and Glenn Andrus have invited us to their house next Sunday um, after church for fellowship hour. Now, I know a lot of us have meetings, but Carol said, just come later, it'll be just fine. So go to your meeting and then still go over to Carol and Glenn's. They have a lovely backyard with a pond, and the kids have got stuff to play with. If you've got kids that want to come, uh, maybe they don't want to wear their best clothes so they can play. Um, easy parking, level, you don't have to climb around anything. If it should rain, will be in the fellowship hall. The pencils and crayons backpack program is in full swing now. If uh, you know of anybody that could appreciate a backpack full of uh, school supplies, please have them call the church office and the secretary will take their name and their grade and everything and it, they will be distributed on the 19th. If you want to donate to the backpack program, we take financial donations, just make it out to Cuba First Baptist Church, and please put uh, school supplies in the memo so it goes to the right place. You can put it in the, in the uh, offering, you can mail it, you can drop it in the lockbox in the fellowship hall. Please, if you're new, there, these cards are in the pew pockets. Uh, fill this out so we know who's here. And then you, that too can go in the offering plate. Vacation Bible School is right around the corner. It starts on August 14th. In the court, there's a donation board where you can take uh, things that you're willing to donate. There's monetary stars and there's a box of cookies and so forth that we'll be needing for Vacation Bible School. If you know of children that are uh, pre-K through six, um, they'd need to call the church office and register and we'd love to have them come join us. There is a one-day conference on August 19th at the Elbridge Baptist Church for the Men. Uh, please contact Bill if you're interested in going. Save the date. Put a circle around it. September 10th. Um, Dan Chetty is going to be with us, but not during the church hour. He's going to be here uh, in the afternoon, so we're going to have an early bird dinner, which we all love, and uh, then he'll be talking to us a little bit about his mission. We are still in need of egg cartons to, to uh, give to the woman who generously donated eggs for us to distribute in the rummage rooms. So if you have any, you can put them in the uh, kitchen, and uh, Don Santangelo will be picking them up. Our kids and some of our leaders are at Camp JYC today and have been since Friday. I'm sure they're all ready to come home about now. I know the, I know the leaders are. Um, but please keep them in prayer for a safe travel home. And uh, the Board of Education um, has voted to sponsor someone from the church to take the lay studies class in church administration. I took that class, and it's very enlightening. You don't think about all the things that are involved in, ad in administration of a church. So they're encouraging a trustee, um, a, di a deacon, a moderator, a moderator. It's an online course, and it starts on September 6th. So consider doing that, and they've already voted to uh, pay for it. I think that's it. Oh, I know, there was one more. Walt and Ida are going to be, Walt and Ida Hibbard are going to be celebrating their 65th anniversary. And uh, there's going to be an open house here on August 26th from 2 to 4. So again, put it on your calendar and stop in and tell Ida, uh, tell Ida and uh, Walt how much you think of them. And um, they have asked, rather than bring any, any gifts or anything, bring an item for the food pantry. So please, uh, please keep that in mind, and I'll get it in the bulletin for next week so we can remember. Okay, let's join together in our responsive reading. And you guys are going to read the bold print. Praise the Lord. We are here to dedicate all our prayers to our Savior, 
Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. So this is a very special Sunday, at least it's special to those of us who love music. And we'll be singing a lot of hymns. I'm not going to ask you to stand up for all of them. You may just be comfortable and sit, but you, the, the trade-off is you have to sing loud and with enthusiasm. In a rural church in Alabama, a trio stood to sing a song that was literally sweeping the South. The year was 1948, and the occasion was a funeral of a beloved grandfather. The song was I'll Fly Away. It was in 1929 that Albert Brumley composed that song. He recalled that it came to him as he was picking cotton in a hot summer day, and he was singing a song entitled, If I Had the Wings of an Angel. When he thought of flying away, he later admitted that he was thinking of flying away from the cotton field, but the song instantly took on a spiritual meaning and has become a beloved hymn for so many. Let's join together and sing, I'll Fly Away. going to follow that one with standing on the promises. Sing loud and with spirit.
going to slow it down a little with a favorite, especially of campers. If you're a baby boomer raised in the church and born in the late 40s or 50s, you probably grew up singing Pass It On around a campfire or at youth group meetings. While known primarily for his youth musicals, Mr. Kayser, an accomplished pianist, has written music for a variety of venues. He's composed more than 60 hymn texts and tunes, the most famous of which are Oh, How He Loves You and Me and Pass It On. Mr. Kayser provided the background to pass it on to a journalist. And he said, on a Sunday night, I was sitting in our den by the fireplace where there were remnants of a fire, and it occurred to me that it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And the rest came very quickly. My wife suggested I should say something about shouting it from rooftops, and that ended up in the third verse. It only took about 20 minutes to write the lyrics. Afterwards, my wife and I went for a walk and let the song ruminate in our minds. Such a simple explanation to a song that has moved te teens to tears and young people to the Lord. God certainly had a hand in that song and continues to use it to renew spirits and refresh souls. From a smoldering fire to countless funerals, hymn hymnals, and weddings, and of course, campfires from around the world. Let's join together and pass it on. As we enter into our time of prayer, please look at the prayer list in your bulletin. There have been several additions this week. I did get a, an update that Jean Searle is home, but still weak. Um, please note our friend of the week, David Halstead. His address is in the bulletin. I know he would love to hear from his Cuba friends. Let us pray. Good morning, Father. We're gathered here as a family to praise you, to glorify you, and to thank you for your love and grace. Be with all those that we've mentioned here and with all those who lie in our hearts. May they all feel your healing hand and understanding words. Many are hurting in our world. Please be with them, and please be with those who, can't help, who can help these terrible times. 
May they recognize your power and act with love and understanding. Bless all those who cannot be with us here today, those just starting out new chapters in their lives, those who are struggling, and those who are living in their final chapters. Each life has a purpose. Each one is loved by our Savior. And each one is promised eternal life in your time. We may not know what your plan is for us, but we ask that you grant us the patience and trust to go forward as you would have us go. Join together now in the prayer that you have given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Another one of our favorite hymns is Be Thou My Vision. Sometimes hymn singing invites us to connect with the saints who have gone before. Such is the case with the famous Irish hymn, Be Thou My Vision. The original poem, which was found in two Irish manuscripts in the library of the Royal Irish Academy, may be dated as early as the 8th century. The Irish text was translated into prose by Mary Byrne and then published in numerous publications. Quite often, our older hymns come to us as a collaborative effort before we see them in our hymnals. Be Thou My Vision went through many of those efforts. Following the original publication in Ireland, the hymn was included in a number of British hymnals. After World War II, the hymn came to the attention of hymnal editors in the US, and it has now become a standard hymn in most hymnals today. Be Thou My Vision.
As we enter our time of giving, we remember the love that our Savior gives to us every day, every hour, every minute. Finish what you were playing and then we'll play the video. Huh? Finish what you were playing and then we'll play the video. Okay. Okay. Uh, I just, okay. I guess I was, I, just I, talk I, amongst I, yourselves for a minute. I just said in, in, in the garden, that's what I turned to. Oh, okay. Nope. All right. My bad. It's okay. Right. Shall we play the video? Okay. Play the video, please. This was a request that I was unfamiliar what with, so we, we found the video. Gives up its crown, takes all its glory, and lays it down to close the distance, to find the one. Nothing can stop it, the Father's love. It runs like a river, bringing life to dust and drought.
bless these offerings that are given, not only from our pockets, but are given from our hearts and minds. May they be used to glorify the works of the church and used to aid others as we act as the hands and feet of Jesus. Our scripture today can be found in your pew Bibles, Colossians 3, 16. Let the message about Christ completely fill your lives while you use all your wisdom to teach and instruct others. With thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Music has historically been a huge part of worship from the simple Sunday school class tunes to the complex strains of the Messiah, its faith in motion. As we debated where our church was going, it was often mentioned that we needed to preserve some of the old familiar hymns. It's kind of like the macaroni and cheese of music. Comfort, happiness, safety, and the love of God all rolled into one. Many come to church for a time of renewal and a reminder of the promise our Lord has given us. Others come to be bathed in the comfort that the hymns can supply. I lead a devotional group at the Field of Dreams, and my elder friends there love the old hymns. Many join us from the memory unit, and they may not appear to be very alert, yet when Amazing Grace or In the Garden are played, their faces change. They relax. They know the words, they sing, and they smile. A deep, relaxed smile that says, all is well. Afterwards, they often, turn to, often return to their lost world, but for those few minutes, they are a part of the present. Hymns teach us. They can serve as sermons that teach and explain biblical truths. They shape the way we view God, each other, and Christ, and how we are to live in the light of the gospel. The truths they communicate preach to us throughout the week and remind us of the role in God's word. Singing hymns in church is a form of teaching that uses poetry to open us to the word of God. Singing for the Christian is a kind of worship. It offers a way to glorify God and to remind ourselves what is important in the world. The importance of hymns is that we learn what we sing. For example, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her. For her, for her life he died. Throughout the week, other things call for our praise, attention, and affection. Singing hymns of God's character reminds us of his greatness. By singing hymns of the atonement, we remind each other of the amazing work of Jesus. Hymns of consecration remind us of the dependence of the Christian upon the steadfast grace of God. We sing to remind the weak and weary that their salvation is in God. We sing to support the doubting, to believe and be renewed. We sing to be joyful and to be joined with family and friends in the strains that give us peace. We choose historic hymns that provoke thankful hearts. The aim of singing hymns is engaging both the head and the heart. Just as we read and meditate on the scriptures to see and worship God, so we choose songs that teach a truth that causes our hearts to erupt with praise. In choosing hymns for worship, we choose those that make our hearts sing. From the content of the lyric to the movement of the melody, we want beauty and message to come together and serve the people of God. Singing hymns in church, whether old or new, is not simply an opening act for the sermon. It's not a ob- a black, it's not a filler time to warm up the congregation. Singing hymns in church is a holy practice. We sing because God has commanded us, and our songs should fill our hearts with thankfulness and delight in God. Surely the hymns recorded for us in Scripture are meant for singing hymns in church. In these songs of praise and prayer, truthfulness and confession, 
we see the wide spectrum of the hymns the church has sung for ages. Regardless of the median age or church experience, hymns provide a sense of identity and reverence that seems to rest upon the people. These songs unite the body of Christ as they have for generations, joining the youngest and the oldest of our congregation and everyone in between as they consider and hope in the same truths of God and his grace. Hear this, our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Will you pray with me? Father, as we sing these hymns, we thank you for your grace and your promise. May we all feel your presence in each word and be embraced by your love as we seek comfort, courage, and peace in our lives. The author for I Need Thee Every Hour, Annie Sherwood Hawks, wrote over 400 hymns in her lifetime. Born in Hoosick, New York on May 28, 1835, Hawks loved writing poetry, and her poems were published in local publication while she was still in her youth. Annie Hawks was the mother of three children when the hymn for which she is best known was written. Annie later wrote, I remember well the morning when in the midst of the daily cares of my home, I was so filled with the sense of the nearness to the master that wondering how one could live without him either in joy or in pain. The words, I need thee every hour, were ushered into my mind. The hymn was actually presented on the wings of joy and love rather than the stress of great personal sorrow like one might think. It serves as a hymn of hope, strength, and as a reminder that we need the Lord every day, every hour. Shall we go and join together in I Need Thee Every Hour?
and no hymn saying would be complete without this favorite in the garden. Let me share a little about the hymn that we're going to do next. This favorite was composed by Philip Bliss with the lyrics by Horatio Spafford. Horatio knew something about life's unexpected challenges. He was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. About that same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Thinking a vacation would do his family some good, he sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. While crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sank. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio's daughters. His wife, Anna, survived, and upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to him that said, Saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship, aware of the situation, 
summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As the grieving father thought about his daughters, words of comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down, and they have since become a well-loved hymn. Perhaps we cannot always say that everything is well in our aspects of our life. There will always be storms to face, and sometimes there will be tragedies. But with faith in a loving God and with trust in his divine help, we can confidently say, it is well. It is well with my soul.
As we prepare for communion, I'm going to ask you to stand and sing everyone's favorite, Amazing Grace. These songs aren't about us. They're about the blessed hope we have in the return of Jesus, the peace we have with God through the power of the Holy Spirit, who lives in all believers. You can be having the worst day ever, but relying on God to help you through brings a peace that no one can ever take from you. And the most blessed song of them all, Amazing Grace, leads us as we prepare to sit at the Lord's table. May you all feel the hope and love of God as we join together in the song, Amazing Grace. Be seated. Go ahead and sit down. Look, I am standing at the door and knocking. If any hear my voice and open the door, I will come. I will come in to be with them, and will have dinner with them, and they will have dinner with me. Let us open the door. He is knocking. May we share the table with our Lord. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and gave it to them and said, Take this as my body. He took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, and they drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. I assure you that I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way in God's kingdom.
Christ. Do this in remembrance of him. And with this cup, we are united. Take and drink, do so in remembrance of him. And after they had sung a hymn, they went out. So let's please stand and join together in We Are One in the Bond of Love. benediction. Okay. Go ahead. They start. I didn't. We'll just skip the benediction today. Okay.